ਕੀ ਸਾਰਾ ਕੁਝ ਆ ਰਿਹਾ I'm ready Lisa The psalmist tells us, you make known to me the path in life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you this morning. Welcome to worship. We hope this Thanksgiving season gives us all a chance to count our blessings and to pass those blessings on to others. Vada has some announcements for us this morning. Happy birthday to Jim Eskridge Jr. and Jackson Ingram on the 13th, Carson Cochran and Denise Miller Hatch on the 15th, and Michelle Sands Kleinheider on the 17th. Thank you to everyone who helped with the holiday craft show and who came out and supported the youth and Christian Ed Committee. It really does take a village. Today, following worship, is our annual Christian Ed Committee bake auction. Thanks for contributing and bidding today. Our Living Water Association meeting is Saturday, November 18th from 9 to 12 at the First Congregational UCC in Hudson, and Pastor Susan and I will be attending. Our next church dinner is Saturday, November 18th from 4 to 6. We are helping to supply Thanksgiving dinner for 10 Rudstown families. We'll be packing the baskets on Sunday, November 19th after worship. Please see Kathleen for the sign-up sheet to help supply the food. Thank you in advance. The order forms for Christmas poinsettias is in the back of the church. We will have the hanging of the greens on Sunday, December 3rd after worship. Our church, along with other Woodstown churches, will once again take part in Christmas in our town, where we help Woodstown families with Christmas gifts. We'll be, we will be receiving the names soon that we will help with. Each tag will have the age of the child and suggested gifts. The families will receive the gifts on December 16th, and thank you for helping. Save the date for Wednesday, December 13th for our annual Women's Advent, Advent by Candlelight Evening. A sign-up sheet is on the stand in the narthex. If you would like to co-host a table, please see Pastor Susan. The New Horizon Band is performing today at 1 at the Knight Center, the Knight Akron Center. And December 9th, please come to the Akron Summit County Public Library to hear the Akron Piccolo Christmas performance. It starts at 3 p.m. and there will be a range of flutes from bass flute to piccolo. Kaylee update. She flies out to Bogota tomorrow. So she'll um, meet her new host mom tomorrow and start her two-year volunteer ship thing. <laughs> she is gonna be in the mountains, so it's gonna be a lot colder. I like the average of 55 degrees a day and like 20 days out of the month it rains, so. She's going to miss the beach. She spent uh, yesterday all day with her cohort group at the beach. So, and she waited until she got back from the beach to tell me she was at the beach because I would have 
break down all. Oh. <laughs> Do we have anyone else? It's nice to see you here, Mr. Melby. It's nice to see you here. Are you healing up well? Anyone else? Just announcing the sign up sheets for the Thanksgiving basket as well as for the dinner at the Americas. So the Thanksgiving Day is the meeting for next week. So to sign up, we should have during the place by next Saturday. And the dinner is Saturday, so during the dinner is the case for that too. <laughs> continue with our morning worships. So there was a husband and wife getting ready for bed and the wife was standing in front of this fully mirror and she was kind of giving herself this good hard look and um, she says, you know, love, she said, I, I, I look in the mirror and I, I just see an old woman. And I, my face is wrinkled, my backside is droopy, I've got cellulite on my legs, my arms are kind of flabby. She said, tell me something about myself to make me feel good. And her husband thinks about this for a while, and he's looking, he's thinking, and he said, oh, well, there's nothing wrong with your eyesight. <laughs> well, maybe that's a good reason why the writer of James that we're going to read today tells us to watch our tongues, and we'll talk about that today. So let's begin with our prayer. Dennis, thank you for your service, and um, we remember those who served this past um, Saturday, and um, thank them for everything that they have done for us. Let's begin with our call to worship. <clears throat> we are God's work of art. Each one a precious gem, a marvelous tapestry, a potter's delight. We are God's handiwork, we born in Christ Jesus to be a blessing. Every one of us, woven together in love, shaped with infinite compassion, painted with incredible beauty. We are God's creation. 
All of us, touched by grace, saved by faith, and begging to praise. Let's sing together our opening hymn, This is the Day. prayer and Lord's Prayer. To you, O God, we lift up our souls. To you we offer our praise and prayer, our worship and thanksgiving, even our very lives. Make your ways known to us. Show us the path on which we should walk. Lead us in your truth and teach us. For you alone are the God who saves, the God in whom we trust, and the one on whom we wait. As together we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Total response of reading is Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your sanctuary? Who may live on your holy hill? He whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from his heart, and has no slander on his tongue, who does his neighbor no wrong, and has no slur on his fellow man. Who despises a vile man, but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps his oath even when it hurts. Who lends his money without usury, and does not accept a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things will never be shaken. Right here where we stand 
we will see the promised land. Mm. One day there'll be no more lives taken too soon. One day there'll be no more need for a hospital. One day every tear that falls will be wiped by his hand. We will see the promised land. from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who, do, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror, and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a, right, a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. The religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world.
Grace and peace and love be unto you from a loving and a merciful God. Well, when Duke and I were in Tennessee a few weeks ago at my niece Charity's home, um, her middle child, Annalise, was talking about how easy it was for her younger brother, Luke, to just annoy her. She said, I don't think of myself as someone who's easily annoyed, but for some reason, Luke can just get me so annoyed, I just want to let him have it. She said, I don't think I'm like that with my friends. She said, well, maybe a little, but she said, for some reason, Luke just makes me want to go, ugh. And I said, well, I said, maybe it's because you know with Luke, it's safe to feel those feelings because you know that even if you yell at him, he's still going to love you and be there. Whereas with your friends, maybe you play it a little bit safer. She thought about it. She said, yeah, yeah, maybe so. But boy, it's, it's easy to get frustrated with people, isn't it? I mean, especially it seems those that we are closest to, I don't know, for some reason. Maybe it's because we know, we just know them so well. Maybe we expect more of them. Or maybe it's because we know that they're still going to love us if we occasionally lose our temper with them. Or maybe we take out our frustrations on them because it's easier or safer than expressing ourselves with other people. I don't know, maybe it's a whole combination of those things. That's some of what I think is going on in the video of, of helping mom with her tablet. So let's watch that. <laughs> Write it all my stuff up. Sven? What? Get in here. I was looking at Facebook and it went. You still on Facebook? Get me on it. No, you still on Facebook. How do we take it back home? No, that's never been a function. I want to go to Facebook. Oh, the levels are on now. Look at I that. Don't know what what should that. my nickname be? Yeah. I'll do Betty. <laughs> Carolyn was showing me this photo of her kid the other day. I wanted to show you. Where is that? Where can I find that? How do I get there? Just how do I? Just tell me. Carolyn, I'm sure it's okay. You know Carolyn. She was at the baby shower last Tuesday. You remember Carolyn? Or was it Wednesday? It's not important. I think it was Tuesday. I don't think I was even there. Right here. Carolyn's photos. I don't see that right here. What are you looking at? Where do you see that? Can I find disposable uh, tissues here too? I'm just trying I don't think you're going to be able to buy anything. No, no that's going out of business. I just read that. Definitely not going to go out of business. You're it's running out of cardboard. I just saw it. I just saw it. There's a clock on here? There's a clock. Why are you zooming? No. I'm I want to take a picture. Okay, take a picture of one. I need to change the profile picture. Oh, actually, I like that one. Can I use this? This is some crosses on a hill. That's Carolyn. That's Carolyn's photo? That's Carolyn's photo. She shouldn't use the crosses. She hasn't been to church in two weeks. Okay, see photos and updates. Don't tell me, just show me. Okay, so I'll show Don't you. show me, just tell me. Don't no, touch it that hard though. You're going to get your greasy fingerprints. Did you wash your hands? No, but Go wash your hands quick. Use soap. I hear you didn't use soap. Two pumps. Oh. You're dripping all over, you're dripping all over, stay on the mat. You're dripping all over. What towels am I supposed to use here? Don't use the good towels. Where are the bad towels? Well, right? fine, use the good towels, but you're washing them. You hold it. Okay. Well, I can do this part. Let me just take Don't touch it like that. Do I? Oh. If you, there's a calculator on you? There's a lot of things. It's a computer. Give me this, okay? Okay, go ahead. Just going to boom. Two seconds. That's your new profile picture. Oh. Mom, you're on YouTube right now. Well, I don't know these people. Is this Carolyn's friends? No, this is no one related to Carolyn. Let's go back. Oh, this me. young man looks nice. You know, <laughs> trying to help out here and does pretty good I think it hanging in there with her but both mom and son are getting frustrated with each other and it's funny because it's so true if my mom were still with us you could ask her about putting new numbers in her cell phone contacts or ask my husband about getting text messages sometimes technology can really be great but it could also bring out I think some of the worst of us and dealing with something new that, or something that seems simple to us, 
yet another person just can't get it. Ask Cliff when I make a phone call to him. <laughs> and our frustration level, it can mount and it can mount and it can mount and maybe sometimes we end up saying something that we regret later. It's like that Billy Crystal movie, City Slickers. Three friends are riding horses and they're driving cattle out west. And one is trying to explain to another that um, with the VCR that you can watch one show and you can record another one. And the one is just not getting it. And the other one's very patient and continuing to try to explain how you can do this and keeps explaining and keeps explaining until finally the third friend says, you know what, after what probably feels like hours of listening to this, he yells out, shut up, shut up, shut up. He's not going to get it. He's never going to get it. Well, can you relate? I think maybe we all can at times. And that's probably part of why James writes these words. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Those are pretty strong words, aren't they? Probably because I think maybe because they're so true. It really does matter how we speak to one another. Now, James says we're to be doers of God's word, not just listen to it. We're supposed to do it, not just let it go in one ear and then go out the other. And it doesn't mean that we're not going to disagree with anyone. Or it doesn't mean that we don't stand up for what we believe to be right or what um, you know God is telling us is right or wrong or so forth, but we do so hopefully with respect and with the hard work that it takes sometimes to save the other person's dignity, trying to reach a conclusion that we feel that God wants us to reach. Not always easy. Nope, it's not. If it were easy, we wouldn't have to work at it. If it were easy, James wouldn't even have to mention it because we'd just be doing it all the time and we wouldn't need God's help to make it happen. But just because it's not easy doesn't mean that it's not worthwhile and it's worth working on. So there are a few things that I try to keep in mind as I work at keeping that tight rein on, on my tongue and speaking with love. One is just sometimes to take a deep breath. And before we are responding, you just sort of breathe for a while. That, and then you take it and you picture in your mind placing that into God's hands. Another is learning that being right isn't always as important as that working at connecting with someone else, trying to understand them, trying to understand where they're coming from. Hopefully that they're doing the same thing for us. A third thing I think is to work on those three powerful words that say, I am sorry. You know, when it seems like I failed at keeping a rein on my tongue, Asked my husband if it was a stressful week, maybe he got a few of that myself with a few I'm sorry's. That those words, those three little words go a long way, not only for connecting with another person, but also just for peace for our own soul as well. And I think another pretty important thing in my book, and I think in James's book too, is to remember how absolutely patient. God must be in dealing with me. You know, if I find myself getting irritated when, you know, say when I was trying to help my mom learn something new on her phone and she just wasn't getting it or she'd be just too timid to even try it and I'd say, you can't break it, mom, just try it. Or maybe that child at Bridge Builders that I've asked what seems like 10 times to you know, stop talking or to sit still and to listen to the leader. Or even sometimes, you know, that driver that cuts me off from that lane when it goes down to two lanes to one lane. You know, I try to remember how utterly patient God must be as he goes over and over and over something that I should have learned long ago and maybe keep messing up on. Yep, sometimes it just kind of takes walking away, even you know, physically or maybe even in your mind, and then coming back to some things. You know, it takes sometimes actually almost like biting your tongue from spreading sarcasm. Yeah, it can take a great deal of patience, even when it doesn't seem like 
you know, there's an understanding of what's going on here to go with it. However, is it worthwhile? Yes, because I want the same hard work and patience shown to me. And I want God to continue to be patient with me. And I want my religion to mean something, not to be worthless, as James says it will be if we don't rein in our tongue. Now, I was reading the other day that someone has encouraged our asking the following questions before we open our mouths to speak. Before we say what we're going to say, we're wise to ask ourselves these things. Is it true? Is it kind? Is it necessary? Does it improve upon the silence? I like that one. <laughs> Does it improve upon the silence? And that we say then, we say this prayer to God, you know, God, please help my words to edify, you know, to build up the situation, the other person, myself, and so forth with those words rather than tearing down. Why? Well, as the psalmist in Psalm 15 says that we read today, I want to dwell in God's sanctuary. And I do that by walking blameless and doing what is righteous, speaking the truth from the heart, having no slander on my tongue, speaking from love and a heart of mercy and grace. You know, it matters what we say. It matters how we say it. And yeah, we may have differing opinions at times and so forth from one another, but what really matters is how we listen and speak to each other and being able to, to part, feeling like we there's still a respect between us and a love regardless of the differences. It, it's a gift that I think that God really wants to give us. It's really one that's worth working on. It's one that's worth perfecting in our lives, you know, at, at home, at school, at work, at church, at play, even behind the wheel of the car, right? How we speak to one another makes a difference. You know, striving to see the other person being a child of God, worthy of respect, regardless of who they are. And that's a pretty awesome gift that God gives to us. And it's an awesome, awesome gift that we can receive from God. You know, being respected and being this beloved child of God God sees the best in us and wants the best for us. So let's work at making our religion worthy of God's love for us and let's see what a difference it makes in our own lives and in the life of another person. It's amazing what having patience with someone and speaking encouraging words and so forth can do. You know, God does that for us all the time, I believe. So let's work on following God's example of how God is with us. Amen. <clears throat> and let's begin our prayer time with singing together, Oh, How I Love Jesus.
us pray. Loving God, we thank you for our time here today to draw closer to you, to breathe in your presence, to praise you for who you are and how much you love us, and push us to love others. Help us, patient and merciful God, to curb our tongues, to remember the patience you have with us, and to pass that same gift on to others. Help us to let our faith show through our works and our words, learning from each mistake to be more forgiving and loving and faithful. We love you, Lord. Help us never forget that and pass that love on to others. When we rise each morning, help us to place our lives in your hands and to remember to pray for kindness and love to surround us in everything we do and say. When we go about our day, help us to feel your presence with us and to see your face in those that we are in contact with. When we lie down at night, help us to count the blessings of the day and whatever stress or cares the day has given, help us to place them in your hands and to sleep peacefully knowing you are with us. May this week bring us peace and joy and gratitude. May we shine your light for others to see and to know that they are loved and cared for by a grace-filled and merciful God. Please bless those that are in need of healing, and comfort, the necessities of life, peace, and joy. In Jesus' name, we lift up this prayer, we place our lives in your hands, and we thank you for being with us always. Amen. Well, let's count our many blessings that God gives us each day as we give back to God a portion of what he's entrusted us with.
and especially for that inexpressible gift of Jesus. Help us, O Lord, to see where we have been blessed and to be a blessing to others. Amen. You may be seated. Our closing song is, Lord, I want to be a Christian. <laughs> sunshine bring you hope. May every sunset bring you peace. And may God hold you forever in the palm of his hand. Amen. <laughs>